Sean Diddy Combs in the national spotlight, accused of sexual assault, sex trafficking, and rape. Last week, the L.A. and Miami homes of Combs were raided by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security as part of a federal investigation involving human trafficking crimes, according to law enforcement officials. That investigation stems from sexual assault allegations from past civil lawsuits. Two of his sons were spotted in handcuffs outside his L.A. home. The music mogul has not formally been charged or accused by federal prosecutors. Combs' attorney called the searches a, quote, gross overuse of military-level force. So let's get into the mind and motive of this case. Joining me once again is psychologist Dr. Catherine Coleman. You know, Catherine, looking into these lawsuits, it is very, very disturbing. I mean, some of these lawsuits allege that Combs were sexually assaulting teenagers all the way back even to the 90s. What do you make of all this? I mean, it's horrifying, and yeah. it really reminds me a lot of when the accusations about R. Kelly came out. Yes. And we think, oh my gosh, like, I grew up listening to this guy's music. How right. could he do such a thing? And, you know, we see this a decent amount with celebrities. There's this rapid rise in, in power. With that comes a lot of influence mm -hmm. and women, right? That's that's yeah. just kind of what happens. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate, obviously, that this has all happened. And it's amazing to me that it has taken this long for mm -hmm. all of this to come to out. Come up. Yeah, no kidding. And, you know, this past Sunday, I found this bizarre, to be honest with you. Combs was actually sharing Easter photos of his daughter on Instagram. I would think that when you are in the international spotlight, right that there's an investigation going on your homes got raided the last thing you'd want to do is call attention more attention to yourself and pretend like nothing happened right uh, but, maybe maybe you would but also maybe you want to kind of balance out the perception that the world has with you yeah you know i know that you guys are thinking this really horrible negative thing about me right now but Really, this is who I am. It's yeah. a family man. I love my children. I mean, okay. it, it, he may be trying to kind of influence the public perception right now because right. of everything and right. saying, like, look, I should still be yeah. in your good graces. Yeah, like reverse psychology in a way, right? Basically, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's get into our second national case here. On Monday, Alex Murdaugh was sentenced to 40 more years in prison for financial crimes including conspiracy, fraud, and money laundering, stealing millions of dollars from his clients. Murdaugh was also ordered to pay more than $8.7 in restitution to his victims. His federal sentence will run concurrently with his state prison time, where he's already serving 27 years in prison for a slew of financial crimes, and that's in addition to the two life sentences the once prominent attorney is already serving for the double murder of his wife and son. So Catherine, in a case like this where there are multiple sentences being served at the same time, what is it like for the convicted criminal? I mean, is there any true remorse here? You know, when I look back at everything through the Murdoch trials, and there's been so many documentaries that have yes. come out about this case, I'm not buying that he's remorseful. You yeah. know, this is an attorney, he is, well established, right? And he, I think he knows how to play the game. Mm -hmm. He knows what he needs to say right. um, in order to at least try to buy back a little bit of respect or empathy. Yeah, yeah. If if there's much left, um, in cases like this where criminals, you know, they're serving these life sentences, yet they still have to go through another trial. Another case, an example is Lori Vallow Daybell, right? Mm -hmm. She's already serving a life sentence back in Idaho, so. In their mind, I mean, is there really any hope left of, of I mean, they're going to spend the rest of their life behind bars. So here you are going through another trial. Maybe they'll spend the rest of their life behind bars. I mean, there is True. always a chance for an appeal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, you have to understand that everything that goes on during these trials is recorded. It's on record. Right. And so they can be using that information in an appeal later. Um, you know, for or against them. And yeah. so, yeah, it's in his best interest probably to to go through the trial in hopes that maybe there could be an appeal down the road or maybe there could be, you know, a reduction or less re restitution. Right. Who knows? Something. You know, if I'm in his spot, yeah. I'm not going to have a lot of hope. I'm going to think, oh my gosh, this is the rest of my life. This is it. What am I going to do with my time? Yeah. Let's just get this over right. with. Right, right. All right, Catherine, thank you so much for all of your insight into the four cases. We appreciate it.